The Legion. Thesis and antithesis. The Legion is the worst enemy we've ever faced. We're out of food, we're out of men, and we're out of time. With Caesar and a new legate here, the Legion's not gonna fall for the same old bag of tricks. The NCR will find our teeth at their throats in a dozen places. Conflict is inevitable. There will be no attrition, no falling back. Pax Romana. Only carnage. Our way. Caesar. Time is fast approaching when my Legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. It's got the momentum of thousands of Men by. My army has been ready for some time now. Season. People back home don't know what these young men and women are in. They know Season. nothing of my Season. tactics. Season. Or the strength of my forces. Season. Season. Mars's eyes are upon you. Do not fail him. Or us. Kaisar's Legion, the boogeyman of the Mojave, is a brutal, imperialistic faction guided by principles of martial excellence and personal sacrifice. They are fierce and merciless, a massive slave army helmed by a dictator formerly known as Kaisar. From the onset of their arrival in the wastes of the Mojave, the Legion finds its horns locked in conflict with the new California Republic over the lands west of the Colorado River. While the acquisition of Hoover Dam is their current military target, Kaisar has his eyes set on what lies just beyond this old world wall, Vegas. As the Courier, we can experience four separate outcomes to this conflict based on our backing of one of the four main factions vying for power over New Vegas. Three of four of these outcomes oppose the Legion at the second battle of Hoover Dam, resulting in a Legion loss. This is, however, based on the courier and their hero's journey, and not indicative of how the battle will play out should the courier meet their end in the Good Springs graveyard on that fateful night. When analyzing the evidence, it's clear that Kaisar's Legion will win the second battle of the dam without courier intervention, and continue on to conquer all of New Vegas. There are several factors that support this conclusion, Starting with the state of the factions themselves, the New California Republic by the events of New Vegas are overstretched, demoralized, and nearly cut off from California after the decimation of their supply line through the Divide and the recent disruptions along I-15. In stark contrast to this, Legion forces are unified, highly trained, experienced, and their morale has never been higher showcased in expressions from legionaries craving a fight with the NCR. As the saying goes, the results speak for themselves. We can see several instances of the Legion's power over the NCR prior to the events of the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Legionaries were able to sneak into NCR-occupied searchlight, completely undetected, and unseal nuclear fuel casks from within the town annihilating the soldiers and removing a key NCR strategic position. This resulted in decreased NCR activity in the area and freed up Cottonwood Cove for occupation. Cottonwood Cove soon becoming a massive staging area and supply line from the fort into the Mojave, a single finger of the Legion reaching across the Colorado. Furthermore, Legion forces led by Dead Sea pressed into the town of Nelson forcibly removing the NCR, gaining another strategic position along the Colorado and successfully waging a campaign of psychological warfare against one of the NCR's largest military camps in the Mojave, resulting in Camp Forlorn Hope becoming completely demoralized, ill-supplied, and terrified of a Legion invasion. The Legion's campaign of terror doesn't end there, however. A small detachment led by Frumentadius Vulpus and Colta managed to push deep into NCR territory and eradicate the entire town of Nipton, causing panic amongst the forces at Mojave Outpost, simultaneously frightening and demoralizing NCR troops all over the Mojave as they receive the devastating news. Completely unbeknownst to NCR intelligence, the Legion even managed to establish a raiding camp southwest of the town of Novak putting them in great advantage for disrupting the only supply lines to Vegas that are left. 
Legionaries from this camp invaded the fortified ranger station Charlie, inhabited by the most elite units in the entire NCR, and wiped them out without a single of their own casualties sustained. This raiding party even managed to take one of the rangers alive, forcing them into a fate worse than death. These are just a few of the many instances of Legion forces overpowering the new California Republic, with events like the Battle of Willow Beach and the Battle of Arizona Spillway proving that operations west of the Colorado mirror those to the east of it, showcasing that Legion victories aren't mere strokes of luck for the armies of Kaisar. This can be seen plainly when we analyze the state of the NCR. The only victory they have achieved against the Legion thus far, aside from their decisive victory at the First Battle of Hoover Dam, was the capturing of a Legion Centurion, Silus. Leading up to the Second Battle for the Dam, the Centurion wastes away in his interrogation room, having not revealed any information to his interrogator, nor does he plan to, much to the dismay of the NCR. Without courier intervention, Silus remains a prisoner of war without ever having given up what he knows, that a Legion spy has infiltrated the ranks of the NCR army and continues to successfully sabotage their operations from Camp McCarran to the horizons of the Mojave Wasteland. The power of the bull and the bear can be seen plainly in their camps and compounds. In Legion territories, Vast amounts of legionaries can be observed training, sharpening their blades, honing their aim, and instructing the next generation of legionaries. In contrast, the NCR soldiers are more often seen relaxing, with very few taking it upon themselves to prepare for the war ahead. This speaks to an overall level of preparedness of each army. An extreme example of NCR torpidity can be observed in a group of soldiers stationed at Camp Golf who have remarkably poor combat performance and attitude, the lackadaisical behavior earning them the moniker of misfits. Despite his best efforts, their acting sergeant can't seem to whip them into fighting shape, even failing to instill the slightest amount of military discipline into his troopers. Sergeant McCready ultimately resorts to outsourcing this job to the courier in hopes that someone, anyone, can instill a fighting spirit in these youths. Examples such as this are not seen in the Legion, as legionaries who fail to perform will not survive their training. It should also be noted in the case of the misfits that the techniques taught to them are remarkably simple and are foundational basics for any soldier such as alternating their fire and throwing grenades properly. It's not surprising, however, seeing as how most NCR troopers only receive two weeks of basic training before their deployment to the Mojave. Although it's clear and evident that the soldiers of the Legion have vastly superior discipline and martial prowess, strength of the individual is not the deciding factor in war. When it comes to the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, the strategy of each army must be analyzed, as even the strongest army will fail if its strategy is ineffective. This is demonstrated extremely well during the First Battle of Hoover Dam. At the time, the Legion army was helmed by the Malpais Legate, Joshua Graham, its first commander. While a strong warrior and a legend to his men, his understanding of strategy applied to smaller, less advanced tribals and not standing armies, with several fortified positions, supply lines, and advanced technologies. While his tactical know-how is mirrored in that of his opponent for this battle, the incompetent and hawkish General Oliver, the Legion had a clear advantage in this surprise assault. An advantage that was soon stripped by the tactical genius of Ranger Hanlon whose vast experience in warfare against all manner of enemies, from tribal raiders to the armies of the Brotherhood of Steel, paved the way for an NCR victory against the armies of Kaisar's Legion. The Malpais Legate's strategy was to march his troops along the top of the dam in a triplex axis formation, overwhelming the NCR forces with their speed, tenacity, and sheer numbers. Hanlon crippled this approach by ordering his sharpshooters to take out Legion commanders in the back rows, causing confusion amongst the Legion ranks due to a sudden lack of battlefield leadership. This forced the Legate to command his veterans to charge the ridge, where the sharpshooters were located. 
The NCR troops were ordered to fall to the side and stay out of the way of the Legion forces crossing the dam, allowing Legion veterans to charge into nearby Boulder City, which was rigged to blow with C4 and dynamite. As soon as the bulk of Legionaries entered the splash zone, the town went up in smoke, dealing a crushing blow to the Legion and forcing a full rout back to Arizona. This defeat was a wake-up call to Legion leadership and was not taken lightly by Kaisar. On the way back from Nevada, Graham met with Kaisar, who was enraged at his defeat. Kaisar ordered his Praetorian guard to seize his former legate, who was then covered in pitch, lit ablaze, and thrown into the mouth of the Grand Canyon, showcasing to all in his legion, firsthand, the price of failure. Learning from Graham's folly, legates such as Linnaeus, the monster of the East, adapted the legion strategies from the squad level up to counter that of the NCR at every turn. In an ironic twist of fate, during the second battle for Hoover Dam, NCR General Oliver implements the exact strategy that lost the Legion the first battle. As Mr. House comments on, Oliver wants to overshadow Hanlon's strategic genius of the first battle by beating the Legion in a straightforward slugging match, proving to all that his army can be even the strongest of foes. Oliver's overconfidence and ignorance to his enemy's adaptations have left him complacent. In contrast, the new legate Linnaeus takes a vastly different approach, studying his enemy in deep detail, learning about their mindset, ability, equipment, tactics, and how to exploit them. The NCR infantry digs in and fortifies their position, placing snipers and key lookouts to eliminate the Legion's leadership, just as last time. However, they overlooked a vital component of their position, the dam's intake tunnels, a path straight to their heart. Should the courier fight for the NCR during this battle, they have the option to eliminate all of the legionaries in the intake tunnels by activating them. However, it appears that the military isn't aware of their presence there, and only a single engineer knows about these tunnels. Should the courier decide to not activate them, they remain dormant in every possible outcome showing that the NCR intelligence did indeed overlook this detail entirely. These intake tunnels allowed the Legion to find their way into the dam's interior, surpassing the front line and surprising the NCR from their rear flank, completely disrupting any chances of reinforcing the dam top. Should the courier side with the Legion, they even have the opportunity to open these tunnels to allow for Legionaries to reinforce the dam top allocating enough manpower to totally overrun the sniper's nests and bypass the frontline fortifications. In this scenario, NCR forces are locked into a pincer maneuver with nowhere to retreat, as even retreating from the dam top itself is interrupted by the Great Khan reinforcements arriving to the rear of the dam. Having learned from Graham's mistakes, Legion forces are no longer grouped by rank such as with the previously utilized triplex axes formation. They are now arranged in small squad fire teams. Each fire team comprised of various ranks, including prime and veteran legionaries, all led by a senior officer, such as a contertion. Having multiple legionaries of higher rank allows for each fire team to maintain its combat effectiveness in the event a senior officer is dispatched and can no longer issue commands. This in combination with the Legion's use of advanced ballistic firearms accounts for and removes its previous shortcomings. It's important to note that during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, several other areas of the Mojave come under fire from Legion forces and auxiliaries. As previously stated, the Great Khans attacked the NCR's rear flank at the dam top, preventing any reinforcements coming through the nearby Boulder City or Ranger Station Alpha. Camp Forlorn Hope is completely overrun by the Legion and likely erased to the last man. Camp Golf also comes under attack, although manages to beat the Legion off their doorstep, likely thanks to the heavy veteran ranger presence there. Both of these locations are meant to reinforce the dam with troops and supplies, however the attacks completely cut off their ability to reinforce the dam during the battle itself. Camp McCarran gets assaulted by the fiends, the monorail is destroyed preventing the camp from resupplying the strip, 
and the Strip is attacked by the Omertas, causing complete chaos along the breadth of the Mojave. With the Legion's teeth at their throat in a thousand places, and their fortified strategic position sinking by the minute, the NCR's defeat is all but assured. All that's left is the final room, General Oliver's compound. The bodies of countless legionaries litter the entrance, speaking to its dangers and to the effectiveness of Oliver's guard detail. However, while it is massively fortified and booby-trapped to the teeth, it would only be a matter of time before the Legion reached Oliver. By nature, the Legion achieves its goals at any cost, including that of human life, and would send wave after wave of troops in here until nothing and no one stood between Linnaeus and Oliver, a tactic that the NCR is all too familiar with, having used the same methods to overpower the better trained, equipped, and fortified forces of the Brotherhood of Steel at Helios 1. It's certain that the Legion would have plenty of troops to spare in order to accomplish this task as well, as even when the Courier doesn't side with them and the Legion takes heavy losses, they are shown to have plenty of reserve forces to halt the Courier's advance into Linnaeus' camp. Furthermore, there is no evidence suggesting that they would achieve anything other than a decisive victory in this battle. It is likely that a significant amount of their casualties would come from clearing Oliver's compound and battling against his personal guard of armored heavy troopers and veteran rangers in this small, enclosed space. But seeing as how Oliver does not retreat from here, despite having the means, the battle would ultimately end with General Oliver decorating a cross. Suffice to say, a Legion victory is all but assured as it stands now. Should the Courier decide to align with them and assist with the myriad of tasks that bolsters the Legion's strength, such as allying with the Boomers and with the Enclave Remnants, dispatching President Kimball, fixing the Legion's artillery weapon and destroying the Securitrons under the fort, then the Legion, who are already a force to be reckoned with, will become truly unstoppable. <laughs>